Hello and welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash and today we're going to be talking about list recursion. So this is going to be very important for homework one, so I want to get it out of the way kind of before we tackle homework one. Um, there are two important and different ways to recurse through a list that we're going to go over. Um, and hopefully at the end of this you're, you're better prepared to tackle some of the recursion questions in homework one and in the future homeworks. Um, so, the first way of, of recursing through a list I've just called not tail recursively. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example, I'll, I'll code this out for you. This is not a, a homework problem, this is just a, home, uh, a problem I devised myself. It says, count the number of elements in a list, not tail recursively. Of course we could use the length function, but that's, I'm going to call that cheating in this case. Here I want to do it without using the length function. So my plan is Say I get a list like I run, you know, head count one, two, three. I want this to return three. And the way I'll do that is I'll cutter through it until it's empty. Right? So I'll only have to cutter three times and I'll keep track of each time I cutter. And then when it's empty, I know I'm done. <clears throat> so my base case, the case where I know I'm done, will be something like if oops if empty list then we're going to return zero right if they input an empty list the length of that is zero if it's not empty there are elements in it this is going to look a little funky at first but bear with me okay so what i just said is if it's not empty well, first, I'm going to cut the list, and I'm going to recall my original function. So that's recursion. But I'm calling it on a list with one fewer elements. So if my input the first time is list one two three, the next time I call this on cutter list, it's just going to be two three. But if I run head count on cutter list, we said that that will return the length of the list two three, which is only two. So I have to add one to that. I hope that made sense. What this, going, what this is really going to look like is it's going to end up going, here I'll kind of write out what it'll, what it'll do when it sees 1, 2, 3. It will say, okay, well that's not empty, so let, you know, head count list 1, 2, 3 will call plus 1 on head count list 2, 3, which will call which will, will lead to plus one on plus one on head count list three, because it keeps cuttering it, which will lead to plus one, oops, plus one, plus one, plus one. And then after this, after it cutters list with just three in it, it will return zero. Let me make sure I have my plus next to my parenthesis. So this will return 3, just as I want it to. Alright, let me prove it to you. I'll run my code. I'll run head count on 1, 2, 3. Beautiful, it worked. I got 3. Alright, we can, we can test it more vigorously. We can say head count on list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. There we go. Pretty confident that works. Now we're going to do it with tail recursion. So the difference in tail recursion, you may notice that here, this plus one, all of these calculations have to be done at the end. Um, and it kind of has to hold them in memory as it's recursing. It has to say, okay, I'm going to add one to whatever I get from this. Or I'm going to add one to whatever I get from this. Okay, I'm going to add one to add one to whatever I get from this. Oh, I'm going to add one to add one to add one to zero. That takes up a lot of memory. Uh, it's not, not very memory efficient. The other way to do it is to keep track of this each time. So to have something like a counter, and each time I cutter, I just add one to the counter, and at the end I'll return the counter. Sometimes uh, when we're writing, you know, the easy thing to do here would be to add a counter variable. But when your homework problems are written by somewhere, someone else, you can't always do that. The number of inputs is set. So instead, I'll write a helper function. Maybe it's good practice to write my helper function above my original function. I'll say define, t 
tail tail count helper uh, tail count helper needs to be one word list counter and then here all I have to do to my original function is call tail counter or tail count list help or tail count helper on list and zero so now I will call this with the input list, the same list, and a counter that starts at zero. And here I'll do something similar. I'll say if the list is empty, I'm not going to return zero because then it will always return zero. I'll return the counter because you know we've said where counter is going to keep track of how many times we've cuttered. If it is not yet empty, then again I'm going to call head count. Uh, sorry, tail count helper, not the original tail count, on the coder of the list, and I'm going to add one to the counter. Right, so let's write out kind of like what the recursive calls look like when this sees tail count <clears throat> one, two, three. Well, this will call tail count helper list one, two, three with a counter of zero. This will call tail count helper list two three with a counter of one, which will call tail count helper with list where'd it go? Oops. Tail count helper list three counter of two, which will call tail count Helper, remember it's doing this until the list returns empty. Tail count helper. I forgot my parenthesis. Tail count helper with an empty list three, which will return the number three. All right, let's run it just to prove it. Oh, uh oh, I forgot a parenthesis. Run tail count on the list one two three. See if I didn't make any mistakes. There we go. Run it again. Tail count. We can test more vigorously just for fun. We can edge case. We can call tail count on an empty list. Get zero. Good. So we're pretty sure it works. Another thing we can do to check if we really want to see what's going on, maybe I have an error and I want to troubleshoot it, is I'll use something called trace. So at the top of my document, all right, require racket slash trace. And then below a function, like tail count, I can write trace, tail count. For this case, maybe I want to trace tail count helper too, to see what both of them are doing. All right, let's click run again. Now when I run tail count, on list one two three okay there's some extra output here it outputs three but it also shows me kind of how it got there right so like we said tail count on one two three called tail count helper tail count helper on one two three and zero as we set up here which called tail count helper on two three and one which called tail count helper on list three and two tail count helper on an empty list and three and then it said if empty list, well that's true, so let's output the counter, which was 3. And then tail count originally, output 3. Okay, I'm going to remove that, or I'll leave the trace there. Trace is immensely helpful, the best de debugging tool in Racket, in my opinion. Okay, last function, remove twos from a list. <clears throat> so let's think about how we're going to do this. So, it would be really tough I mean, look, let's come up with an example list. List 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 2. In Racket, the easiest way to do this is going to be to create another list and just to copy over elements. Um, or, or, or we could kind of, uh, yeah, I think recreating this list or creating another list and copying elements over is going to be the easiest thing to do. So again, our base case is going to be, you know, we're going to cutter our way through each time asking if the element we're looking at is a 2. 
and then when we're at the end, when we're at empty list, we're going to be done. So I'll say if empty, I know that's going to be my base case, as opposed to a recursive case. If empty list, well, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to return yet, so let's leave that blank. And then if it's not empty, let's think about what I should do. Maybe I'll have another if. I'll ask if it's equal to 2. It's probably a good question to ask, because if it's equal to 2, we want to remove it. If it's equal to 2, well, we just ignore it, right? We're not going to copy it over. So we're going to call no 2s on the coder of the list. That will remove, sorry, equal to, that's not going to return anything helpful, equal to to what? The first element in the list. So each time we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to be looking at the first element of the list, and then we're going to see whether it's a 2 or not. If it is, we're just going to call no 2's on the rest of the list. If it's not, then we'll say cons2. Cons was the function we talked about that adds an element into a list. And I'll say cons2 onto the recursive call. Uh, no 2's. Again, we're going to cut the list so that we don't end up in an infinite loop. Okay, I just closed my parentheses there for fun. So what are we doing here? We're putting 2 into our recursive call. That's kind of confusing. Well, what is our recursive call going to return? It keeps cuttering the list. Well, we should probably have it return a list so that it can cons 2 into that list that we eventually get. Let's think about a really simple case. Something like list 2. This is going to ask, is the list empty? No, it's not. Is the car of the list 2? Well, yes, it is. So call no 2's on the cutter of the list. So the cutter of the list would be an empty list. We go back. We say, is the list empty? Yes. What should we return? The output here should be an empty list, right, without the 2 in it. So here, I guess we have to have an empty list. Would this work if we have, say, like just a 1 in the list? What would this return? Well, it's going to ask, is the list empty? No, it's not empty. There's a 1 in it. Is the car of the list equal to 2? No, not yet, or never. Then we're going to do this. Uh, ooh. Uh, is equal to car of the list? No, so then, oh, I messed up. We're just calling it on the uh, remove 2s from the list. So if it's equal to 2s, we call it on the car of the list. Else, if it's not equal to 2, no, that was right. Cons, this was wrong though, right? So if it's a 1, we're not going to cons 2 into the beginning of the list, we're going to cons whatever the car of the list was, right? So if it's a 1 or a 3 or a 5, we're going to do cons the car of the list, so that 1, into the recursive call. Okay, it got a little confusing, right? Let's look at the trace and we'll see if it makes a little more sense. So I'll run this. Oh, I'll make sure I trace it. Trace no 2's list, uh, no 2's. Let's try an example. No twos on list two. So this did what we said, right? No twos on a list with a two. We'll call well is empty uh, is equal to the car of the list. Yes. So it's going to call no twos again on an empty list, right? The cutter of just two in a list, and that will return empty list. Let's try it with 1 in it. So this, called no 2's on 1 in a list, it called no 2's again because, you know, this statement here, cons is car of the list onto another car of no 2's with the cutter of the list. So the cutter of a list with just 1 in it is empty. And then it returns that empty list but it keeps track that it needs to cons 1 into that list. So then it puts 1 in it and returns 1 in a list. Okay. I think that makes sense. Hopefully you think it makes sense too. Let's try it again more vigorously on something like we set up here. Harder example. Nice. So it went through and asked uh, it's, you can't really see this cons car of the list call because we're not tracing that, but you can imagine it, right? So one goes away, but it keeps track of cons one on two, and then it'll call no twos on this, which will just remove the 
2, it'll call no 2's on this, then it'll keep track, it'll say cons 3 on 2, it'll keep going, it'll call no 2's on this, it'll ignore that 2, and just call coder of list, or no 2's on the coder of the list. We'll get to the 5, it'll keep track of that, it'll say cons, cons 5, it'll ignore this last 2, it'll eventually return empty list, cons the 5 in, cons the 3 in, cons the 1 in, and then return that. Same thing we would get if we did this. Right, I can show you. Move it down here. We get the same thing. Oh, my parentheses might not have been matched up, were they? There we go. Perfect. All right. I hope that helped you understand a little bit of how we're going to be recursing through lists in homework one. If you have any questions, as always, come into office hours, email the CS201 help email, um, or post on the Piazza. Thanks for watching this video walkthrough, and I hope to see you in the next.